it just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a shed update. Right, we're all done. So it says remove USB to continue display operation. I'm now off to Southwest Fixings to pick up something that's going to be helping us a lot this winter. Morning, everyone. Welcome back to Northwake. First job on today's list, change the battery in the forager. So we've been having some issues starting this machine and we wonder whether the battery is just knackered because um, it's just flat all the time. Now, it could be that something is shorting out all the time and drawing stuff off it um, or the battery itself is just tired, old and knackered. So we've got a replacement. So I'm just looking about changing it here. So you've got the earth there. Um, if I... That's the isolator there. So that's currently isolated. There's no power. Live here, earth there. It's all fairly straightforward. And then just this bracket here, which uh, I need to take off somehow. They are stupidly heavy though, those batteries. I'll show you the size of it. And there is the new battery. It is a hell of a weight. But yeah, new battery there. Find ourselves some spanners. I think we've got everything disconnected. We need to disconnect. Oh, right. So, I had to disconnect one of these P-clips. That's where that bolt's come from. In order to get at the other bolt which keeps this all locked in, which is here. Just goes down through that hole there. Need to put the new battery in. Slide that on top, do the P-clip back up with the bolt, and we'll see if it uh, see if it'll work. Of course it would start raining now, wouldn't it? Remember, lift with your knees, lift with your knees. One, two, three. Well, hopefully you can sort of see what's going on here, basically. That's the live, that's the bracket that holds it in, that's the earth, or the negative. We need to reattach this to that, just slide along there a bit like that. But before we do that, we've got to manipulate it enough to get these bolts back in. Now this is all dead at the moment, but I wouldn't recommend putting it live anywhere near an earth. If the electrics were turned on. Right, I reckon I'm all done there now. Both terminals are back on, brackets on and fixed in place. So if we uh, turn the isolator off or on, whichever way you look at it, we should now have some life in the cab. Moment of truth, these displays should light up. Oh! That's what we like to see. The reason I'm in here is because all of the combining we did the other day. Uh, the data was saved on this screen. This is the screen we take out and we put in the combine. So it's got all the yield data and everything on it. I need to take it off the screen, put it on a memory stick so we can look at it on the computer. Um, the only reason we've got to do that is because the combine doesn't have JD link. It needs JD link to send it from the combine to the, uh, the cloud, I suppose. So what we'll do is somewhere in my pocket, I have a memory stick. There you are, look. Mason's King memory stick. We'll stick that in the side of the display, take the data, and then we can see it on the computer. Right, so in here, somewhere there should be a USB port, which there is. I think we can then, oh, here we are, export data. That's what we want to do. Export profile name. Combine 23. So I imagine that will transfer a lot more than just the combining, but everything else would have already been transferred. So hopefully we'll have our files. Right, we're all done. So it says remove USB to continue display operation. So we'll turn the key off and that will shut itself down. The afternoon has taken a turn for the better. I'm now off to Southwest Fixings to pick up something that's gonna be helping us a lot this winter and this autumn and, uh, and for the next couple of years going forward as well. So let's go and pick it up and you'll see it when we get back. Right, it is actually the next day now, um, but here it is. So here is our JFC 170 litre milk cart, complete with a uh, mixer on the inside, which is that bit down there. 
and also a pump um, and a display so you know how much stuff you are dispensing. The plugs in, we've got it here. This is the charger that comes with it. So uh, you can obviously use it mobile. You haven't got to have it plugged in all the time. That's the charger that comes with it. Also comes with this lead for when you want to do your mixing. You do need it plugged in to do the mixing. Um, and then we had an adapter to take it to a normal plug in the workshop. So if I just show you a minute, what you would do is you put a certain amount of water in there to start with. You then turn on your mixer using this one here. So you go on. That then starts flying round. You don't ever want to put your hand in there, because that will end badly. You then tip some milk powder in, you weigh it out, whatever you need, tip it in, and then top up with the uh, required amount of water. When it's all mixed, you turn that off. You would come along here and disconnect this plug, because that is your mixer. Once you've got it over where you want it near your pen, you put out your trough or whatever, you turn it on using the other button on the side here. And then it's just like being at a garage, you uh, dispense your milk using this handle. It's probably not good to run it dry. Now it does require a bit of calibration, so we're going to go and do that in a minute. Uh, we'll put some water in it. I need to make a little hose. Got a tap here. I'm a bit worried about having all the electrics beside it. I might move it over a bit. Um, just to make a tap off here so I can fill some water straight into it. So the other thing I need to do is bring down the milk powder the coarse calf mix, we need to sort out some troughs. That is one thing we need to do for feeding coarse calf. And then I need to come down here and tidy everything up because this is all ready now, all ready and working. All the water situation is sorted out. That pen down there we're going to leave as one big pen because it's got one big trough in the corner, so that's fine. I will clean out the straw and put some fresh in there. Uh, that's got some fresh straw in there ready. Need to take those two troughs off the gate, actually. That is one job I need to do. And then we're getting there. It is exciting. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Here is our milk powder. It is Volac Blossom. That is what we're going to use. We've actually got some left over from the calves we had last year. So we'll use that first. Then we've got another pallet. We'll probably need more. And then we've also got some of this calf mix. So it's 18% quality coarse mix. That'll get them going. We'll probably need some more of that as well. But that'll get us started. I'm going to go and grab the little e-worker, get that in the shed. Good job that Merlot is here, actually, because the uh, telehandler's on the other farm. I've been unloading straw over there this morning. Right, we're going to do some calibration on this milk cart. I've bought in all my milk powder and coarse calf, it's all there for when we need it. Right, we're gonna do some calibration on this milk cart. I've bought in all my milk powder and coarse calf, it's all there for when we need it. So, there is a way of doing it, which is in some of the instructions up here, which I've not thrown away, like you might think I would have. Instructions here to follow, but we'll see what it's doing before we have to uh, start messing around with it. So. Disconnected that, let's fill it up with water, see what it pumps out. Well, that's no good. It's already leaking. Out there. I'll have to do those bolts up, see if I can stop it. Anyway, whilst we're here, see if the mixing works. So, water in there. Mixing. Right, we know it mixes. Now, this is a three litre jug. Let's see how close to three litres this thing reckons it is. Turn the pump on. Right. Turn that off. See how close we are. So that isn't, it's about two and three quarters. So it's, it's putting out less than what it thinks at the moment. Right, so I've just calibrated. It's actually very, very easy um, using this little page of instructions and some of the buttons on the flow meter there. So I've got five liters into a bucket now. Um, 
that I've marked, you might be able to see the little black mark inside the bucket, so that's five litres. It was actually thinking it was 5.09, so it was hardly out at all. I've just calibrated it down a tiny little bit, so that's ready to go. What I'm going to try and do now is see if I can stop this thing leaking, so go get some tools. Eventually found the problem with the help of Gus. From undoing the uh, motor here that runs the mixer, I exposed this o-ring. Now if I very carefully use my pocket knife, down here the o-ring was pinched between this bit of metal and this bit of metal and he wasn't seated right where he should have been in that groove like he is there now. So I'm hoping it was the fact that he was pinched funny out of place was making it leak. But I sort of want to take this one off now and just make sure I can see the o-ring all the way around. I don't really trust it now to be in the right place. He's got to sit in that groove which he wasn't doing, he was pinched in here, so we'll see. You've got to be able to put this pump on square because otherwise he's going to pinch down there now when I do it up, which is a bit difficult when he's on his side not upright. But we'll, uh, we'll see. I'm going to continue taking this one off. Problem is now the nut and bolt are both spinning together, which isn't very helpful. Right, I am pleased to announce I've finally done it. So the o-ring that sits on the bottom of that pump, or that motor, the mixer, was pinched on every corner where the bolts go in. So it's just been over tightened. So what I ended up doing was pulling the whole thing off, or taking all the weight off the o-ring, pulling the o-ring off, putting it back on the uh, seam that it's supposed to sit on, and then just bolting it up just so it's touching um, on both the pump side and also the uh, skin of the feeder. And we're there. As you can see, there was water in there all the way around it. So if it was going to be leaking, it would be leaking now. God, flipping out, that should not have been that hard. But anyway, I'm glad to say it's now working. I'm happy with it. I'm going to leave it before I mess it up even more. I'm going to take my tools away and, uh, and that'll be it. I might just put a quick shed update in the end of this video. I know it's getting quite long. So uh, yeah, bear with me. Right, just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of a shed update. So the guys have been busy here making the site. So if you look behind me here now, you can see the footprint of where the shed is actually going to be. They've been in and poured concrete in a lot of the footings for where we're going to have stanchions in the shed. So that was all done last week. This has all now been dug off to a laser level. So they've got the floor uh, sort of where they want it. There was a digger here this morning. So all that crushed stone there was blimming great big bouldery stuff. It's all been smashed up. Um, I am guess they're going to use that as sub base. This concrete I'm stood on, I think is staying. But I'm not entirely sure. Along the front here, I think that's where we're going into a drain, and then there'll be new metalwork and gates and everything on the front there. That's where we've extended that way, so it used to come to this fence. So the end of the shed used to be level here somewhere, um, and the water come in there somewhere. So the end of the shed used to be here. That's the extra bit that's going on for the handling system on that end, and then there'll be a, uh, that right one, two, three four and five bays there for the bulls and then there'll be a scrape passage a bedding passage and then at the very back there'll be a race so we can run individual bulls out the back along and into the handling to handle them if we want to yeah, this will now start to change quite quickly as uh, floors and stuff start going down steel work will start going up and we'll, we'll try and keep you updated as it goes so all the remains of the old shed now all that timber that they didn't want to take away this has obviously gained a fair bit of space this will all be concrete as well We'll have panels at the back there, that way, and also that way, that you can sort of push dung up into a corner if you want to, to load into trailers. How snazzy. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, there's links for merch in the description, as well as all my other social links, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, all of that stuff, it's all in the description. So go and follow me if you want to. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you on the next one very soon. Cheerio.